affiliation to your partner. Manners are called rei. There are two types of rei. These are ritsu rei, rei in the standing position, and zare, rei in the seated position. To perform ritsu rei to shinzen, for example, incline your upper body at an angle of about 30 degrees, with your eyes cast down to the floor. When exchanging Ritsure with your opponent, incline your upper body at an angle of about 15 degrees. It's considered rude to lose eye contact with your opponent when bowing. This exchange is also called Mokure. Day that is performed in a seated position is called Zare. Hold your back straight and place your hands on your thighs. Open your knees to a distance of about one or two closed fists. When sitting on the floor, either overlap the big toes of your two feet, or place them side by side. Place your buttocks on your heels. When standing up, start with your right leg. This is the procedure which is commonly observed. When sitting, start with your left leg. This is zare. When inclining your upper body, don't tilt your neck or raise your waist. Place both of your hands on the floor simultaneously and quietly. Also lift them from the floor simultaneously. Correct posture is very important. This position is called Shizentai and is the natural standing position that constitutes the basis of the Kamaya, the posture. Keep your chin down, hold your back straight and relax to release any excessive strain from your shoulders. Let's look at some of the basic Kamaya or postures. This is Chudan no Kamaya, the most important one in Kendo. This is Morote Hidari Jodan no Kamae. This is Gedan no Kamae. This is Hasso no Kamae. And this is Wakigamae. Let's first study Chudan no Kamae, which constitutes the basis of all other postures. Place the little finger of your left hand at the tip of the hilt. Apply firm pressure with the bottom three fingers and light pressure with the index finger and thumb. Position your right hand immediately behind the Tsuba, the guard. The length of the Tsuka should be the same length as your forearm. Hold the tsuka in a way in which the spaces between the thumbs and first fingers of both hands are in line with the extended line of the tsuru. Tense both wrists inwards in a squeezing motion and position your left hand at the height of your navel, about one closed fist away from your body. The correct positioning of your hands can be achieved by locating the base of your left thumb at the same height as your navel. This is the correct form of Chudan no Kamae. This is an example of the wrong way to grip the tsuka with the right and left hands. In this grip, the location of the left hand is too high and both elbows extend too far outward. This is another bad grip. Both hands are squeezing too tightly. The left hand is too low and both elbows extend in a manner that's too straight. 
This is the correct form of Chudan no Kamae. Position the Kensen, the tip of the sword, at the same height as your throat. When facing your opponent, position the Kensen at the same height as your opponent's throat and direct the extended line of the Kensen to point between the two eyes or at the left eye of your opponent. Keep the entire body of your opponent in sight, but centre your focus around his eyes. Place your toes to point straight ahead and put a distance of about one closed fist between your feet. Place the toes of your left foot in line with your right heel. Raise your left heel slightly and balance your weight equally on both feet. This is an example of a bad position in that the heels of both feet remain on the floor. In this position the toes of the left foot are pointing outward and are not in parallel with the right toes. In this position the tiptoed stance is excessive. In this position the two feet are spaced too widely apart forward and backward. Furthermore, the left heel is raised too high. Smooth and natural movements cannot be developed from these incorrect foot positions. Raise your left heel slightly and balance your weight equally on both feet. Let's study the entire series of movements from the assumption of Kamae through the return of the Shinai back to its original position. This is called Sageto, the shinai is carried with the tsuru facing downward. Exchange ritsure with your opponent. This is taito. Raise your left hand to waist level with your thumb on the tsuba. Keep the kensen at 45 degrees. Take three steps forward from your right foot. Raise the shinai in an arc over your head and adopt the sonkyo position, the crouching position. Watch closely how the feet are placed when assuming the sonkyo position. Bend your knees outward at an angle of about 90 degrees. It's essential that you hold your upper body straight when assuming the sonkyo position. Watch how you and your opponent should assume the required posture facing each other. This is the way you should replace your shinai. First return to your original position assume Chudan no Kamae. Then back to the Sonkyo position and return the Shinai to the Taito position. Now stand up and return to the Ritsure location. Start with your left foot. Finally lower the Shinai to the Sagito position and exchange Ritsure. The distance between you and your opponent as well as good timing for effective offensive and defensive actions are called Maai. Let's take a look at the basic mai for striking, isoku ito no mai. One step forward enables you to hit your opponent. Equally, one step back is all you have to take for evasive action. Your shinai and your opponents should cross at about 10 centimeters from the kensen. A closer stance is called chikaimai or chikama. This is a larger interval called toimai or toma. Footwork plays an important role in striking your opponent and parrying his offense while maintaining a proper mai. Footwork techniques are known collectively.